In today's demonstration, I will show you how integrating a modern analytics platform into your applications can reduce the effort required to deliver an effective portfolio analysis tool. I will build, a, build the GUI components of my application using Java Swing and will use FinCAD's new F3 SDK analytics platform to provide the financial calculations needed. I am by no, no means restricted to using Java for this application. I could have chosen to build my application in .NET or C++. The effort required to, uh, to integrate F3 would have remained more or less the same. In the limited time available, I will not dwell on implementation details, but will instead try to highlight the key benefits that Tony raised earlier regarding the use of an analytics library like F3 namely powerful portfolio specification, the provision of portfolio level analysis, the decoupling of trades and models, object reuse and future proofing. To illustrate these points I will first walk through a simple portfolio demonstration loosely based on the offsetting swap example that Tony provided. I have already loaded the application and pre-populated F3 with calibrated market data as well as 230 or so vanilla instruments that include interest rate swaps, credit default swaps, vanilla options, swaptions and cash deposits. I will now create a simple portfolio containing just two vanilla interest rate op swaps, swap one and swap two. So having created my first swap, I will now use it to, as the basis for my new portfolio and then add my offsetting swap to the portfolio. The key feature of F3's design, in fact, a key feature of F3's design is the fact that the description of a trade is decoupled from both the construction of the financial model and valuation method used to value it. In F3, the trade description is purely concerned with the terms and conditions specified on the deal or term sheet. Consequently, it is a model-free representation of the financial contract. This decoupling is also true for portfolios. In fact, F3 treats portfolios in exactly the same model-free manner that it handles individual trades. In common with the latest generation of financial analytics libraries, F3 treats a portfolio as a single coherent entity within its object hierarchy. It is important to note here that my application does not know about portfolios. It is the underlying analytics platform that holds the portfolio. The graphical user interface simply references the portfolio by name. On this screen, I use F3's self-describing interface to build a dependency tree for my new portfolio. In this case, we simply have two, the two swaps I created a moment ago. As you can see, each trade in the portfolio is listed with their independent dependencies. The structure is recursive and there is no limit to the level of recursion that can, be, that can be represented. In fact, in this second example, the portfolio, vanilla portfolio, is constructed from five sub-portfolios, each of which contains a set of trades. The ability to nest portfolios within portfolios allows us to break even the most complex and large portfolios into more manageable components and allows for those components to be reused either on their own or as part of other, of other composite portfolios. So having created a portfolio, how do I value and explore its risk sensitivities? Many modern analytics li libraries allow you to combine a financial model with the trade or, or a portfolio of trades and valuation method in a totally generic way to produce calculated output. F3 is no exception to this rule. In this first order risk report tab, I have selected a model called latest market data and calibrations. My new portfolio, and I'm using a default closed form solution uh, to calculate both the value and risk for the portfolio. As I mentioned earlier, this portfolio contains two offsetting swaps. I can value and generate a risk report for the individual swaps or for the portfolio as a whole. In fact, F3 guarantees to be able to generate a risk report for any combination of model, trade, portfolio trades, and valuation method for which a value can be derived. 
Let's start by examining the risk sensitivities associated with swap 1. All I have to do is choose the swap by name. Note, I have not changed any other parameters here because the representation of the trade or portfolio is independent of the constructed model and valuation method objects. I am able to pick and choose not only which trade gets values, I'm also free to substitute models and methods also. This flexibility is critical when building applications, um, applications which, which will run scenario analyses at the portfolio level. As you can see, F3 calculates first order risk for every market data quote to which this to which this um, sorry every market data quote to which this trade is exposed. Let's take a look at the effect of our offsetting swap on the five year interest rate quote. The equivalent notional, which is the amount I would have to invest in the quoted instrument to hedge away my exposure to it for swap one, is in the region of four hundred and thirty thousand euro. But after adding swap 2 to our portfolio, the risk is reduced. To around 7,500 7 euro. While I know this is a trivial example, I hope it illustrates both the power and flexibility of a, a good third party analytics platform can bring to your applications. But what happens if I'm faced with a new instrument type? one that I have never seen before and for which there is no specific function. In many analytics libraries you would be forced to either cobble together an approximation of the trade based on individual cash flows and or other vanilla instruments or resort to rebuilding your analytics library and possibly even your application too. With today's analytics solutions of which F3 is a good example this should not be a major obstacle. F3's approach is to allow you to define custom payoffs for any standard structure. For example, I can take an, a vanilla interest rate swap and by simply modifying the payoff, create a cap swap. It should go without saying that we can value and manage the risk of this swap as well as add it to any existing portfolio. Ease of integration is a relative term. However, as a former software developer and solution architect, it's a subject that is actually truly close to my heart. In this example, I have used the Java API provided by the F3 SDK and have chosen to embed a single instance of the library into my application. Therefore, I have wrapped F3 in a singleton class that loads the library and manages all of the calls to it. A key feature of F3 is that I was able to build my entire interface using fewer than 20 lines of F3 specific code. In this case I've enabled two of F3's API calling styles. The low level API relies on passing in an XML representation of the F3 function call I wish to make. As an aside, these packed XML calls also make the ideal message payload for message oriented middleware solutions. The second API implemented takes two arguments, the name of the function to call and a hash map of key value pairs representing the function arguments. F3 also supports direct or explicit calls to its API, but in the interest of time I have not shown this call style here. In this short demonstration, I hope that I've been able to give you a flavor of how using a modern, flexible analytics platform can accelerate the delivery of your applications. And I've also illustrated the benefits of having a library that provides powerful portfolio specification combined with the provision of portfolio level analysis and how fully a fully decoupled trade and model representation lends itself to object reuse and provides the flexibility that gives a future proof solution.